Wimp story started with the insight that periods are normally treated as such a functional biological thing. It's just like a tap, you switch it on or you switch it off. And there was never any thought around all the emotional experiences that come along with it in, in a lifetime. And that's, that joined with this idea that we all get taught at school the single narrative of, you know, you get your period at 12, you um, will have a little bit of pain maybe, but most probably not, repeat every 28 days, you will then get married, you will then have two children, and um, you then, you and your body, your irrelevant body can quietly retire into into the darkness and that damaging narrative joined with the, joined with this idea that actually there are so many emotional experiences means that every single one of those other experiences outside of that single narrative lives in silence in in shame and in fear of being aired so that was the the jumping off point of where we went creatively the research wasn't trying to find topics to talk about we knew broadly speaking that we were trying to do two things the one was to widen the experience of, outside of the sort of narrative corset of that that single narrative break free of that narrative corset and show that there were billions of um, experiences we were also trying to to show that there was complexity not just in the multiplicity of of experiences but in the emotions of it and so we were sort of intentionally balancing the good with the bad the love with the hate we kind of knew the broad canvas of subject matters that we were going to um, touch on. But what we didn't have, we didn't have was the emotional expressions of those experiences. And that's what we wanted research to, to give us. We wanted to know how women and people with wombs felt about those experiences. And so what we were using research is we were taking out that anthropomorphic idea that we had that we were going to anthropomorphize the womb and, and and create the sense of the second seat of power and these womb dwellers that work for us and sometimes against us and we were going to use that as a research tool by by asking not what your experience is, is but asking can you tell us about your experience in metaphorical ways so we were using um metaphorical questions but like art therapy does, so if your womb was a person, if your womb was a place, and, and that's what we were sort of cultivating um, and, and sort of getting back from, from the research. And of course, what was, what was profound and incredible was all these sort of unheard and unseen stories were coming back to us in these incredibly poetic ways, which I think Nudge can sort of hit on to sort of describe some of the language and some of the visualization that we were we were getting. This campaign is so much a dance between strategy and creative, and the the initial idea that we had of of anthropomorphizing the womb and and allowing this this visual expression of emotion to come out and and actually uncover these deep set experiences that we often don't acknowledge to ourselves even, never mind be, be happy to talk about it to our, our friends or, or even our families. And the, the, the catharsis that actually happened from people talking about their experiences in an artistic and in a visualized manner just speaks to so much of the texture and beauty that and, and tragedy and pain that actually lies within 
all our experiences that we feel sometimes even in one day, never mind across a lifetime with all the things, all the ups and downs that we tend to tend to go through. And the expressions that came out were so incredibly visceral. And that's what we then took as well as our inspiration to take into the film and into eventually what also became Pain Stories, which was the extension of uh, Womb Stories. When we were doing the post-production, that one of the animators who was working on the um, on the artwork of the monster, the the endometriosis monster, um, a colleague who was sitting next to the art next to her, sort of leaned over with some curiosity and said, "What what are you what are you doing? What are you working on?" And she explained that, "Oh, we're working on this." Um, this monster, this you know, inside the um, inside the uterus, and what the destroy, you know, the attacks, and it's and and the, the the artist was explaining this condition of endometriosis and this monster and what it was representing. And after a while, the person who asked, she sort of she looked and said, "I have that monster. That is my monster. That monster is inside me." And actually, then went and got a diagnosis for endometriosis, which she had been living with and didn't know about because nobody had told her, nobody, you know, because it's, it, it, this is the, you know, this is the, this is the issue. It's a, a disease as common as diabetes, but um, people don't know about it. The expressions of these metaphorical worlds were so important and our, that, that they would viscerally land with, with, within the people watching. And Kareen Khalif, who animated the endometriosis monster, had endometriosis herself. And I think that that expression that, uh, and the visceral nature of her artwork, that pain and, and the feeling and the anger within, in, in the expression of that really, really comes across and really then lands with you as the viewer in articulating a disease um, and a condition that is so incredibly hard to articulate and recognize. It was just such a profound outpouring and when you un uncover and when you allow a space for people to talk and give them the tools with how to uncover and how to talk about the relationship they actually then have with their bodies that you th this anthropomorphic visual language that you then start connecting to your own body allows you to talk about something um, in your life and I think that that this idea that periods are always seen as so biological and actually the the hidden experiences that we go through in all our lives should be spoken about I think that uncovering that was incredibly profound because people were able to not just share or see one story, they were able to see so, so many. And I think that as soon as one person started sharing, then another person and another 10 started sharing and, and the, the multiplied effect of that and the, the unity that that allows that we should all be talking about ex our experiences was absolutely incredible to see and that there was such a need for people to actually talk about them um, and be encouraged to, to, to see them because they also land up teaching you something and, and land up letting you feel so much less alone in the experience that you might um, be having. And I think it's, it was so important for us that it, it wasn't just the intention was never just to tell a film with a couple of stories. The, it, the intention was always to allow other people uh, for, it, for that film to be a tool for other people to land up sharing their own stories because there are so, so many out there. I think people, because they think they connected to it emotionally, it just, it just resonated. And, and the positivity that we got was, surprising to me that we did that the usual places that usually um 
say, oh, you've got to find out. I'm talking about a few newspapers that we all <laughs> might know would be the usual newspapers that say, oh, there you go again, what's next? Um, we're supported. I also love that we got a lot, qu quite a lot of positive um, feedback from, the, from doctors that, that were commenting on the film saying this should be taught, this is important and this is powerful. We, we all know that we often start our creative journey or we start when we think we think from our own experience first. Um, and so a lot of it is diligence and, and intention. It's an intention to not just assume that your experience is the dominant experience or the universal experience. Um, and that, that takes an act of checking yourself all the time. Am I just writing, creating stuff that is my worldview? And, and, and one of the quickest and ways to turbo boost that is collaborate. You know, we, this, is, this is a brilliant job that allows us to collaborate. And it's collaborate with people um, with all the, the experiences and different experiences and different points of view I just broaden your scope and frame of, of reference. That's been one of the things that, I, that I've done. And, and that, if you want to go fast and quickly, co collaborate with so many different people than yourself, than yourself. But fundamentally, it is an acknowledgement that your frame of reference isn't the only frame of reference. Be and, and that, I guess, is a question of develop your empathetic muscle. It's, you know, not, not everybody is walking this life in your shoes and it's project yourself into other people's lives, other people's experiences, other people's thought processes, not to, not to appropriate it, but to try and understand what you don't understand. I think what we can learn from it is to embrace complexity and that it not that everything doesn't have to be simple and the other thing is to listen because your your own experience doesn't reflect everybody else's experience and the more people you have making micro decisions on a project that allow it to feel like a multiplicity of experiences and viewpoints is so important because if you if you cut that down and it's only your world view that's it just seems silly because you you'll be left with uh, a lot less rich a piece of communication and i think a lot less fun as well because it's just been absolutely amazing hearing everyone's stories hearing how they would interpret it and 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 nurturing that and understanding that and and playing with that has just been such an such an incredibly profound and creative experience for everybody on the on the team that has worked on this